In this video I'm going to explain my day trading runner strategy which I'll divide into two parts the first one scalping long and the second one shorting those runners so I won't waste any time I'll directly start with the long strategy the first thing that I use in this strategy is psychological resistance and supports imagine if you're swing trading or you have a stock and you want to sell the stock is currently around 5.3 and you want to sell higher where do you usually put your sell orders? You simply take your sell order, maybe click 5.5 and enter, 6, enter. Usually people don't put their sell or buy orders like 5.31 or something. The sell orders will be close to odd or even numbers. So that's why around the psychological resistance and support, there's much more volume than usual. So in the runner strategy, I only buy when they break those psychological resistance and of course with some other catalysts. For example, if the stock is around 5.8 and I want to buy that stock, I buy at 6.01. The stock is at 2.9, I buy at 3.01. Where do I sell? I'll explain in the strategy. I always say trading is a game of probability and mainly psychology. So in this strategy, we're thinking what other people are doing and we're going to do the same thing or bet against that. So with this runner strategy, there's four places that we're going to use. The first one, it's very basic. It's on chart patterns. The second is breakouts on higher time frame. The third way is stocks with news. And usually those companies will be penny stocks. And the last way is breakouts when the stock has a really high short float. Why buying at breakouts when a stock has a high short float? Because usually if the stock has a high short float, that means there's a lot of people are short on the stock. And usually if they're going to put stop loss on their trades, there will be at the resistance. The resistance in our case is the breakout. At that point, there will be more buying pressure than regular breakouts. Because when you cover a short position, you need to buy. And if lot of people are buying, it will make a small squeeze. So this is the four ways that we're going to use the long strategy. And after I finish explaining in details every single one. So as you see with these four ways, we're increasing our probability to win. Because each way, more people are willing to buy at that point. And this is how we increase our win rate in our trading strategies. Let's start with the first way, which is the runners on chart patterns. If you remember a few minutes back, I said psychological support and resistance are important in this strategy. For example, on this trade on CAPR, you can see the stock is forming an ascending triangle. But I'm still not buying. When I'm buying, I'm buying when it breaks the psychological resistance. In this case, it's at 7.01. So you can see after it formed the ascending triangle, I'm buying at the psychological resistance, which is 7.01. I set a buy stop order, which is a stop limit order. It means your stock won't get filled unless it touches 7.01. And after that, you can set a limit to get filled. And I sell 15 to 20 cents higher. In the description, I'll put how much higher you should sell or how much you should set your stop loss based on your stock price. In our case, when the stock is $7, based on my experience, I found that from 15 to 20 cents target, it's the best way for one to one risk reward ratio. So if you're setting a target after 20 cents, our stop loss should be 20 cents lower too. This strategy with one to one risk reward ratio provided me over 80% win rate when I started day trading. And you can see what happened with CAPR after we bought at 7.01, it squeezed to around 7.5. Another example was on EQ. You can see it formed the same triangle pattern. I bought at 24.01, which is the breakout and the psychological resistance break. And you can see how it squeezed. This is another example on RKT. I bought at 23.51 which is this breakout and at the same time the breakout of an ascending triangle stocks around $20 and based on its volatility you can set its target and stop loss around 30 cents higher and lower so if you bought at 23.5 a good target is at 23.8 which is around 30 cents this is the last example on the ascending triangle on a penny stock not going to repeat the same thing you understand from the previous examples 
you can see the result and you know how you should trade and by the way you can see the volume when it starts breaking the psychological resistance it starts to get much higher for example when CAPR broke 7.01 you can see the 200k volume and this is always the case same thing here when it broke 24.01 you can see the volume increasing and almost in every example this is another example on meso it formed the double bottom here our perfect buying opportunity here is at the breakout and the break of the psychological resistance and trading is a game of probability we're adding something that will increase our probability to win in our case here is the double bottom so technical pattern breakout plus the psychological resistance all these things will increase our win rate in our strategies so i bought at 18.01 you can see the volume kicking in stocks at this price my perfect sell will be around 30 cents so i bought at 18.51 I sold at 18.8 when I used to day trade this strategy I was not letting my winners run but if you want a way to let your winners run you can use the 9 exponential moving average and whenever it crosses with 9 exponential moving average you can close your position so instead of selling for example here at 18.8 I could let it run to 19.25 maybe which I will increase our risk reward ratios to. This is an example on AMC when it was $5. Now it's around $60. I'm going to show you my interactive broker. Yeah, now AMC it's $60. This example was around $5, which is around here. Now I don't day trade a lot because I don't have much time. I swing trade more. And when I'm scanning for swing trades, I'm not having the time to check for day trades and swing trades are much less stressful so I'm not focusing on day trading but if you just want to day trade this can be something additional that you can use in your strategies for me at this current point it's not worth my time and the stress and there's another reason why I stop day trading it's that when your account grows you can't take the same risk if you're going to risk one or two percent per trade on a bigger account let's say on 100k 500k account it's hard to risk ten thousand dollars five thousand dollars on a single trade it's outside my risk tolerance so that's why i'm focusing more on swing trading so let's get back our example on amc you can see on amc how the volume starts to increase at the psychological resistance areas you can see each time reaching 5.51 the volume starts to increase and whenever it broke you can see the volume increasing and I did a quick scalp on this from 5.5 to 5.65. Yeah, you can see here. I bought at 5.51 and my target was at 5.6. There was no specific pattern at this trade example. It's basically buying breakouts and psychological resistance on runners. The third pattern is a bull flag. You can see GMIA forming a bull flag here. And I bought at 14.01. For a quick squeeze, I sold. Stock at $14, my perfect target will be around 20 cents. So you can see it jumped 20 cents, I took profits. Another example on bull flag. You can see here on RLGY, it pushed, it's consolidating, and I want to buy at the breakout. And of course the psychological resistance. You can see my buy, my buy stop limit order and sell limit. Your buy stop order won't get filled unless it touches your stop order same thing on this example this is another example here you can see the stock squeezed consolidating and i'll buy at the psychological resistance same pattern same thing i don't need to repeat the same things you can see the stock how it's squeezed another pattern is cup with handles very basic same thing the second way that I'm going to talk about is you do the same thing, the psychological resistance thing, with stocks on news. This mainly will be applied on penny stocks. So you can do the same thing usually on runners, buying at breakouts or psychological resistance, making a quick scalp, selling, and over and over again. I use this strategy with 1 to 1 risk reward ratio. So if I sell the stock after 20 cents, my stop loss will be 20 cents lower too. You can do quick scans pre-market on which stocks has great news on gap ups and apply the same thing. The third and fourth way we said we need to check higher time frames. So as we said, the third and fourth way is on stocks with high short load. Why stocks on high short load and trading the breakout? This is exactly why. 
if you buy a stock, if you're swing trading and you buy a stock, usually people sell stop losses at support areas. So if you're short on the stock, your stop loss will be higher. And where it will be that? It will be at a resistance level. Usually those resistance are daily highs or on a 60 minute time frame highs. You understand what I mean. So on stock with high short load, there will be many buy orders at this breakouts because shorts need to cover their position. And if they cover their position, it will make a small squeeze at the breakout. I'll show you on my scanners and prove you what I'm saying by the latest examples. Let's, the let's take the current example on AR. You can see it formed the breakout here, it formed a bull flag and it made the breakout. So this is still on a daily time frame. I'm going to switch on a lower time frame. Yes, you can see the AR on a 30 minute time frame. You can see each breakout. This is the first breakout at this point. It starts squeezing. The second breakout, squeeze. Here, squeeze. Almost every single time. Okay? So you're going to apply our runner strategy at the breakouts. For example, like this. At this point, it was forming the second breakout around here. So what you could do, you could apply our runner strategy and trade at 12.01 to 12.2 maybe, or 12.15. You could do small scalps on the way. Same thing here. 12.51, quick scalp to 12.75 and out. You can do many scalps on the breakouts. I'm going to show you another example. You can find almost anything. This is the last example on H, H E A R. You can see the breakouts at this point at 36, at 36, where you would buy at 36.01 small squeeze out. There's tons of examples like this, tons of examples. You can see at each breakout the same thing almost everywhere and uh, you can still apply the same thing rrc like all the breakouts are usually the same thing this is a very good strategy i used the strategy on swing trades buying the breakout i had a super high win rate with this strategy but lately with the meme stocks when they started going up and down stocks with high short float they started to act weirdly i just stopped trading those stocks now I'm going to start back trading. So you understand the psychology behind it. You can do some day trades on it and you can do some swing trading on them. The only thing that you need for this strategy is you need a scanner to find stocks with high short float. You can see, for example, on the breakout, you can see it when it breaks daily high resistance it alerts me. Stocks usually have 16% short float. 20%, 26%. And the last point I want to talk about is shorting runners. When I used the strategy, it was one of the most exciting moments of my trading career. I'm going to show you my wins and losses when I used to day trade heavily. I was making around $5,000 per day. You can see here, 2,000, 3,000, 1K. 2k those days were insane you can see six thousand dollars three thousand dollars three thousand dollars five thousand dollars i was making really high profits with this strategy you can see four thousand five thousand four thousand two thousand i had insane days but the problem with this strategy is that i'm i was taking big risks and one big loss could ruin everything i had two big losses which costed me around $100,000. But at the same time, I was making money. I was not like, I was just losing money. So on the day trades, I got out break even and I started focusing more on swing trading because it started to become outside of my risk tolerance, basically. My two big losses, I can show you one. I just saw when I was scrolling up. It was on Ruby, R-U-B-Y. It went 100% under 15 minutes. Yeah, it made a crazy move under 15, 100% under 15, and I was in with uh, $30,000. Yeah, this was my last 25k on Ruby. I lost 25k on Ruby. So yeah, one bad trade can take any profit you have. I had the same case with GME when everyone started to buy, and I was short. <laughs> I lost 100k on that trade too. Not 100k, it was around 70k. First time $30,000. Second time, again, around $40,000. So in total, all the stocks around 100k loss. So anyway, enough 
the stories. I'm just going to share you the strategy. Yeah, so this is the strategy I used for 7% profit range. I'm going to show you the filters now and I'm just going to backtest the strategy to check the win rate, risk reward ratios. This is the strategy, 73% win rate. This is with the large profit taking, so it's 73% win rate. And if you use your all your buying power, let's say it was around 20k per trade, you can expect 500% return per year, which is insane. You can see the drawdown. The drawdown is huge. It's around 7%. This is the filters basically. I tried to find the RSI's more than 75. Change 1 minute 3%, change 2 minute 5%, change 5 minute 5%. Then the minimum change from open around 5%. So on the runners, whenever you find a stock it's extended, you can short that stock. I can make in-depth video with this strategy. This is just one example of a scanner. I have six scanners like this for shorting. If you guys want, I can make another video in details explaining the shorting.